All right, let's see what we have here. There we go, the Doc Flex test. This is supposed to be for determining if your TriStar is causing problems. So, it's, man, this thing's tiny. For some reason, it's always smaller than it looked in the picture. Let's see, for IP system pin test, all rights reserved, copywriting not permitted, and that's it. There are zero instructions in this package. So I guess the first thing is we need to figure out how this thing works. And then we'll find some phones to run a few tests on. I've been working with this little device for the last couple of days and the first thing I noticed about it is that you'll want to plug it in this way which seems counterintuitive because you'd take a look at this and they've got their label here on what you think would be the front and some stuff printed down here but it doesn't work that way if you plug it in this way you're not going to get much in most cases you'll get OL from your multimeter so we're going to start this upside down. As you can see, all they did is they just basically took part of a lightning connector and they've soldered it onto a board here so that you can access these contact points, which of, which of course you could do from inside the phone if you pop it open. But the whole idea behind this is that you don't have to break the seal on something like an iPhone 6 or an iPhone 7 or anything like that. And you can just plug this into the outside and hopefully assess quickly whether or not the phone has a problem. So what or or at least narrow it down to whether that might be a tristar problem or a battery problem or something else so uh, this is a diagnostic tool and i'm still sort of up in the air as to how effective it's going to be but i'm going to show you what i have been able to observe about it first of all you're going to get different readings based on whether the phone is powered on or powered off and my understanding is that you will also get different readings if the battery is disconnected. So you want to make sure that you're consistent when you compare this to a working device. So we have what is a functional iPhone 7. I'm going to plug this thing in upside down. And as far as operation, it's pretty straightforward. You just take your multimeter and you're going to set that into diode mode. And then we're going to use the red probe here on the ground, which is going to be number eight on this little pad here. So you'll put your red probe on number eight while you're in diode mode, and then you can test all of these other points here. So there's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we go down here to the first pin, for example, we have 0 0.308 volts. And then if we go over to number two, we're going to have about 0 0.481. Now here's the interesting thing. I'm gonna go ahead and power the phone off just to show you because this threw me off for quite a while. I was not getting readings consistent with what were said to be the right ones for a phone. And I realized later on that if I powered my phone off, I would actually get, and this is with a number of different phones. I've got an iPhone 7 here. I had another working iPhone 7 because I wanted to compare and make sure they were consistent. And they were not consistent with what I was told to expect. However, once we turn the phone off, if we go over here and we check number one, you'll see we have point and 0.311 if we go to number two we've now jumped all the way up to 0.725 so these readings are going to vary based on a number of factors which is interesting and it's only certain pins i want to say it's only number two and number three you can see those are both showing 0.725 but as soon as i power the phone on that is going to drop down to about half of that number so again the main thing is that you want to have consistency between two things that are pretty much the same. So if you've got an iPhone 7 that you know that works or an iPhone 6 or whatever it is, and one that you're suspecting might have a problem, make sure that you're taking these measurements while the phones are in the same state as far as the battery being powered on, being powered off, and so forth. Now from there what I did is I just recorded the information that I had, and this is gonna be for the iPhone 7. You can see this is with the iPhone 7 powered on, which again was throwing me off because these numbers were supposed to look more like this, but they didn't when the phone was turned on. So when I powered it off, I looked over here and these became more in line with where they should be. And I'll also mention that what I've been told is that number one, two, and three 
5, 6, and 7 should be fairly consistent among Apple devices. I can't say for sure how accurate this is on every model, but they state that it'll work all the way up to the iPhone 7 Plus. And I actually, just for the fun of it, we're going to do an iPhone 8 here just to see how it reads. But again, remember that these numbers are going to be different more than likely if the uh, device is turned on or off, whether you have a battery connected and so forth. Now, this is supposed to work all the way up to the 1610A3 TriStar chip. So just for the heck of it, let's try it on an iPhone 8. This is actually going to be a different type of IC known as the Hydra. I want to say it's the 1612A1, if I remember correctly. And let's just see what happens, because theoretically, um, it should obviously measure resistance. I'm not sure what we can conclude by checking it, or if this particular model is going to have the same fake charging problems that most iPhones, or, or some iPhones, develop over time. But if we check this with the phone turned on, we've got 316, 445, 445, 1.383, 316, 456, and of course 456. So we'll go ahead and turn this off and most likely expect to see different numbers at least on one and two, one, two, six, and seven, I would imagine. So let's give that a second to power down. And now we'll try it again. So we've got 317, 672, 672. So again, you can see that two and three will jump up when the device is powered down. On four, we've got 1.383. And then on 5, we have 0 0.317, 6 is 0.498-ish, 0.5. Oh, that's interesting. That one seems to want to keep going up. And then on 7, we have roughly the same thing. So you can see there is a difference uh, depending on whether or not the device is powered up and also, of course, we can imagine that if the battery's not connected, we're gonna have some different numbers. And I actually did this earlier on another iPhone 8 Plus, and these are the numbers that I came up with when the device is powered up and when it is turned off. So again, you can see number two and three are the big differences there. So I wanna try one more thing with this. So this is an iPad Air logic board from the first generation with cellular capability. And of course, once again, we're going to get different readings because this isn't even installed. It doesn't have a battery attached. But if we have another one right over here that was sent in because it was experiencing some problems, before I put this into the housing and start trying to figure out what the problem is, you can see the charge port's been replaced. But apparently that did not remedy the problem. We're going to go over here again, check with our multimeter. And then we can just kind of get, you know, establish a baseline, so to speak, of what a functioning iPad Air is going to do. And I think you got some glare there, right? Let's see if we move that right over there. So you'll see that if we take this and start checking, we've got 0 0.477, 0 0.724, 0 0.724, OL on number four. 5 is 0.482, 6 is 0.726, and 7 is 0.724. So apparently, nothing there on number 4. So let's take a look now and compare with our trouble board here. It's got some problems some sort of problem does not want to power up basically so this is a completely dead or brain dead or whatever you like to call it and let's see we've got 0 0.473 0 0.726 0 0.724 0 0.724 0 0.725 0 0.725 0 0.725 0 0.725 0 0.725 0 0.725 0 0.725 0 0.725 0 0.725 0 0.725 0 0.725 0 
0.726, and then we should have OL here, and we do, and on five, we should have 0 0.480, but we have OL on five, and then over here on six, we have 0 0.726, and seven is 0.724-ish. So this number five would be my first suspicion, is that we want to trace this into the device and figure out where that goes because I would assume there's something that's not connected or something that's not functioning and it is showing us that there is no path to ground for whatever happens to reside on that number five pin which I want to say is going to count from right to left. I'll have to flip this thing over and take a closer look at it. So you can kind of see what the benefits would be to this, especially if this were still in the housing before you pull it out. You can compare your measurements and see how they add up. And in this case, the only difference that we noticed that was significant was on the number five. And it is showing open line. And again, I've kind of recorded these numbers. That's for an iPad Air first generation. And these are good working devices. This is going to be for an iPhone 7, powered on and powered off. And over here, I have an iPhone 8 Plus, powered on and powered off. And in a moment, I'll have an iPhone 6 with the same numbers. So let's go ahead. And OK, so this is turned on. And I will write these down as we go so you can see how terrible my handwriting is. And let's make a little more room this time. This is going to be iPhone 6 Plus. And we'll say on and off. And of course, this is inside the housing. You can have one, two, three, four, and seven. All right, so let's see what this thing does while it's turned on. So we have somewhere to start. We run into one of these with problems. Okay, and why is this showing me a negative number? That's interesting. We have a negative on number one. So, I'll assume that's normal. Negative 1.225. Interesting. Okay, point four six two. By the way, these values should be give or take, I want to say around 10%, 0.463. Oh. I'm shaking the camera again, aren't I? And another negative 1.224. to figure out a better way to stabilize my camera on this thing. Okay, and we should have the same values here, I would assume, both at 0 0.450. Now, we'll go ahead and turn it off. And see if anything changes. So as you can see, now we have 0 0.296, 0 
0.315. Again, I expect these last two to be the same, 723 and 721, so pretty close. All right, so just for the heck of it, I want to power this up one more time. I thought it was very interesting that we have a negative number here and here. And I just want to double check those. I can't think of any reason why that would have come out wrong. So you see we have the 0.296 right now as it's booting. And 0.291. 0.290, and now it's going to get, huh, well that's an interesting one. What do you think happened there? Something wrong with my meter? Or something wrong with my phone? Look at that. We have 0.289, just like when it was powered off, and 0.289, so I don't know what that was about. You know, I had just taken the phone off of the charger. I can't imagine why that would make a difference, but let's go ahead and fix these numbers to 0 0.290 is what it ended up being. Even though for some reason that negative number showed up. I'm not sure why that would happen. But this looks closer to what we would expect. So no idea what was going on there. Maybe the maybe my meter freaked out for a minute. So there we have it. This is what I got for iPhone 6 Plus. I would probably trust this number here, or even better, just turn the device off. It seems like all the measurements that I got matched up more with what were said to be expected when I had the device powered down. So if that counts for anything. Good luck. I'll update this as soon as I get more information and a little more hands-on with this little device on a few other phones and tablets, and I'll let you know. But in the meantime, I think for the price, it's not a bad deal, not a bad little tool to have on hand. If you found the video helpful, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out our weekly Tech Talk live stream. Have a great one, and thanks for watching.